In this demonstration, I'm taking three basic photons of light that represent the major parts of the spectrum, and I'm going to put them on some uh, phosphorescent material. I'm going to start with white light, and this phosphorescent material, just like most materials, uh, will be excited with some light. Of course, these are a little differently because they get excited and they kind of trickle down, they kind of glow, so glow-in-the-dark paint is made of phosphorescent. But in any case, let's see what kind of light actually excites this glow-in-the-dark material. Let's start with white light, which is a mixture of all the wavelengths of light, and I have this material, I'm, I'm sliding the phosphorescent material right onto the light here, and just a little while, let's move this down, and we can see that, wow, it really glows. And clearly, something in the white light, which is a mixture of all the photons of light, is causing it to glow. We go over to the red um, part of the spectrum, and we have red photons coming from the projector, and with the uh, phosphorescent material, I slide it up underneath, and let's see if the red photons, each individual photon has enough energy to excite this material. As I slide it down, we see that the red photons have no effect. This little test here above is from the glowing part of the spectrum, or is glowing from the white light that had a part of the spectrum that red isn't. So red photons, the individual photons, aren't high enough in energy. No matter how long I wait there, it doesn't at all say test. Now if I try the green part of the spectrum, the green photons have higher energy, and if I was to slide this screen up and stop it here, my hope is that the green might, photons might have enough energy to make this glow. And let's, let's, let's look down, and it works a little bit. It's a little bit. It's hard to pick up on the camera. It's only part of the green spectrum has the photons enough to excite these electrons. So they jump back. Let's go to the blue. Go to the blue part of the spectrum, and now I want to put this on the bottom part and see if the blue actually has enough energy. Notice the glowing doesn't become blue or green or red. It becomes its distinguished color that's jumping back from some position. So I've done this, and let's pull this up, and you can see clearly the blue, okay, has enough energy to make this happen. That's why I'm getting multiple tests on the same phosphorescent sheet. The blue photons have enough energy to make this glow. Whereas if I turn this on its side, the green, if I rotate it down, doesn't have enough. The red, as we talked about, doesn't have enough. But the white, which, is, which has part of the blue spectrum, I guess, as you can see, is creating an imprint because there must be high enough energetic photons in this white light, probably toward the blue spectrum, that is causing that to happen. So it's interesting enough, glow in the dark paints don't just work by any light. They work by light that's specific for the electrons that excite them. So if you're using white light, it's usually enough because there's some higher energy lights in there, but the other color lights won't work. So blues work pretty good. All right. Just shows you the uh, uh, the uh, quantum nature of materials.